Um, welcome to our webinar this afternoon. We are very excited to have our good friend and colleague, Justin Mellick here. And Justin is going to be talking on a topic that many of us who have classes maybe thought of podcasting or how would it work with our instruction? What could we do? And so Justin's here to, to kind of give us some insight, facilitate a conversation around podcasting and how it might be part of your classroom instruction with the students that you teach. So Justin, with that, I'm going to let you uh, take it away here. And maybe um, as most of you know, I recently I've been this semester, I'm the acting director of the knowledge market and also managing the library's digital literacy initiatives. I've kind of been doing this work realistically for much longer than that, but um, I've been thinking about podcasting and just like media as a form of assessment for a very, very long time. Um, and over the last year, I've kind of been more specifically working with instructors who are doing this, thinking about doing this, going into their classes, doing some small technical trainings. I'm mean, just seeing different ways this can be done. Um, so I was hoping just to kind of hear what you all, I'm assuming you're here because you're thinking about doing this for a class or, or, or are doing it actively. Um, and I can kind of show you uh, what I've seen in other courses all around the university. Just last week, I did uh, like a more technical demonstration to a clinical dietetics class. I'm speaking to a, a psychology capstone class next Tuesday about this. Um, I've worked with women and gender studies with this topic. Lots of other, a bunch of other ones I'm not thinking of right now. My own class I do podcasting in. Um, so yeah, I was just hoping to kind of hear what y'all are thinking. And um, yeah, I can kind of show you the technical parts of what how I'm doing or how I'm encouraging people to do this. But I also think it's really important to be platform agnostic. So like, I think the part where we have trouble, when I say we, I mean the knowledge market is like, we have to train our consultants on how to, how to use a tool to help your students if they come to us for help. But at the same time, like, I would like to be platform agnostic and like teach these skills is like, I don't want to teach you how to use audacity, for example, to do podcasting. I think like podcasting, I try to, I try to frame this as digital storytelling actually, and not like you're going to be a podcaster, you're going to be a video maker. I try to be like very broad about it. So that's my perspective. Um, so yeah, can I get some ideas of like what you're all thinking about doing a podcast on how you're thinking of organizing it, anything like that? I can share examples I've had recently. I want to know what you mean by podcast. Sure. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I really don't like the word podcast because it's kind of like a word that Apple more or less invented in like the early 2000s. Um, so, I mean, you could argue it's just like recorded AM radio, basically, or like recorded storytelling. So, yeah, I think um, I I do think it's important to make some distinctions. So like the thing, the biggest issue I see with students in podcasting is what they ultimately do is they write a paper and they just read it. And like, that's not what we want, or that's not at least what I'm looking for when I'm having students do this. Like, I think, you know, podcasting as a form of media has just exploded, you know, really exploded in the pandemic is obviously popular before. Um, so I'm really interested in having students be digital storytellers and uh, knowing content so well, that they can speak intelligently in like a genuine, authentic way about something like, you know, that you're usually your best pod, you're the podcast you listen to, you know, you trust them because they sound like experts. So I always really stress that when I'm working with instructors and students. So like, for example, I work with the psychology class I was talking about um, that I worked with the instructor to kind of help her develop the assignment. Um, it's very explicitly says like, don't write a script <laughs> because if you write a script, this tendency is you're just going to read the script. And then again, that's not the point. So um, they have, you know, strong outlines for things. Another thing that I always encourage people to get a, to try to do as a, to, uh, try to not just write a paper is to like define segments. So uh, for the clinical dietetics class I'm working with, you know, there's an intro, there's like a research piece of it where they're talking about a specific piece of research. Then there's a conversation that class, they're actually doing an ad break where the ad break is just like, um, like a fake advertisement for like a form of treatment. I said, I don't know enough about dietetics, but like basically like a treatment more or less. So you can imagine, you know, like in education, it could be like a strategy or something. It could create like an ad for a strategy of some kind. Um, so coming up with like a list of segments, I think is very helpful. Um, and having students pick and choose from those. We're doing that in the psychology course I'm working too. Um, and then to add to that too, I like to talk about, you know, like I, I do think teaching students these technical skills is important. So if you've ever heard me speak about this in general, like I think like 
you know, I think these basic media skills are what using Word and Excel were 15 years ago when it comes to job descriptions. Like, you know, we expect students, you know, we just expect you to know how to use Word and Excel nowadays mm -hmm. and to get it, you know, back 15 years ago, maybe that was like an actual skill, if you will, you know, that could set you apart, but that's just like table stakes at this point. But now I think that differentiator could be in a lot of areas could be these basic media skills. I always go back to education because that's just where I came from. But, you know, like, I think we should expect every single K-12 teacher to know how to make an educational video. Like that's like pretty basic nowadays. And if to be able to show that and to get that experience in college, I think is a very valuable thing to be able to teach students. I think that's true in a lot of cases. In the dietetics um, example, again, um, I was talking to that instructor um, and she was talking to me about like all the awful like uh, TikTok videos about diets, you know, just like horrible information out there. Um, you know, she's like, well, I can teach my students how to use media and we can be a force for good in this world of diet videos, right? And we can actually make accurate information as opposed to inaccurate information that's just out there by who knows whatever. So I think that's true in a lot of cases. I think, you know, we worked on that. Uh... Well, sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, yeah. Worked on a PSA about uh, violence against women. Right. Um, and I think that's a great example, too. Like, you know, I can imagine in lots of criminal justice fields, you know, being able to have these very basic media skills, very, very helpful for sure. Um, you can you can even tie it back to, you know, just like make better presentations, you know, make better slides if you want to be very simplistic about it. Um, sorry, I went off topic about what is a podcast. but <laughs> So, Justin, yeah. oh, did, did someone just ask a question? Yeah, Raymond. Raymond just talked about the diff. Asked about like the difference. Yeah, between... priority. He's cast that book. So. Okay, no. <laughs> like um. Yeah. So I think the difference between the video and podcast. First of all, I doing a video on a technical standpoint is like way is much more. It's just it's, it's harder because there's a whole there's a second you know media element to it. Um. Also, I would say like if you're gonna do things in groups, it's not impossible to do a group video, but it's harder for sure like the technical level is just not quite there. I think it's more reasonable to ask students to do a podcast in a shorter time period than a video, just because there's, you essentially have to gather twice the amount of data. You have to gather the audio data and the visual data and put it together. I think there's lots of value in doing that. But it's just a matter of how much time you're gonna reasonably give the students. So if you say, just the key differentiator is yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, can you speak a little bit about how has has the city or could it be used in terms of student assessment? When what you want them to do is to develop some sort of conversation. You know, for other states, when you, let's say, for a relatively short period, I don't think, from the seventh state, I don't think they're looking for an hour long no. piece. Yeah, length is always something people ask me about. Like generally speaking, when I see these done in like the context you all are living in, it's like usually like 15 minutes is like the top end. Like that's pretty high end from what I see. Um, most most end up around like that 10 to 12 ish. Um, Cause it is take, it is just take longer to speak things than it does to write things a lot of the time. So, um, and sometimes students are really intimidated when you say, oh, this will probably end up being 10 to 12 minutes. That seems really long to them. but. In my experience, when students start working with it, they're they quickly understand that's the time is not a big deal. Um, that I mean, that's probably not true of everybody, but that's definitely what I've experienced with students. Um, sorry, I lost your question. Well, in terms of, because I'm envisioning, which you can't do these days, collaborative projects, and you might have lost students with them. Yeah, you could. So I'll show you here on the technical demo. Um, so the tool that I'm recommending at this point is called Spotify for podcasters. Um, so it used to be called Anchor and then Anchor bought or Anchor got bought by Spotify. Um, it's a it's a totally free online platform. Um, and yeah, you can basically have these like libraries of media. So you could have one student upload their part, another student upload their part, and they could kind of see they could do a little transition between the two or you could, you know, have them 
you know, get on Zoom and record together as conversationally or in person. Um, and it's all this one big shared media pool. Another different, different difference I wanted to point out too is like, I think when you're designing these as a class, there's like a big decision you make in the beginning. And that is, do you want students to have their own individual podcast or do you want their class to have a podcast and all the students and or groups make an episode? So that's like a big difference. So this dietetics class I'm working with, the instructor made a basically a, a shared Gmail account that all the students use. And that's like their podcast. And then each student has an episode that they log into. And they're so basically at the end of it, there's this really nice product that's a whole podcast with I think she's gonna have eight episodes that's all each episode is done by a different group there's some downsides to that but it's sure. it's nice because it's like one easily shareable thing yeah. as opposed to having like a whole bunch of different links out there anywhere and you could make that all one shareable thing ultimately but it'd be a little harder um I, i've seen that method work pretty successfully a few times sure. what's what's the downside to that the downside is that theoretically any student could delete any other student's work. Um, uh, so you don't want that, obviously, but um, big downside. It is a downside. Yeah. But I, I, I will say like when I most faculty choose that option um, because it's really cool to have it all in one place. Um, the psychology instructor I'm working with, too, her thing was like she actually wants students to pick and pull from each other's. They're actually interviewing community members as a part of this. Um, so she wants them to like pick and pull from each other's recordings so it depends. so if you're doing it the other way though each student or each group has to have their own individual sign on yep 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 could it also be part of an assessment would be for uh student to hear somebody mm -hmm. and then capture that mm -hmm. and get a podcast are there ways to yeah, actually, I'm working with, uh, so the other two big podcasts I'm working on this semester are ones, they're both with honor students, um, ones in nursing and ones in physical therapy, and they're essentially doing the same thing, where they're going to uh, different doctors or physical therapists in their field, specialists, and they're interviewing them. So I work with these students to be like, okay, what are your segments going to be in your podcast? You can't just like interview them and just take the whole thing. So basically what they're doing is they had an intro where they're talking about the specialty, and talking about the person they're about to interview a little bit. Then they're having the interview and editing it that down to like be reasonable. And then they're having a final segment is them kind of putting that interview into context and reflecting back on what they got out of the interview. That's just them speaking to the microphone without the interviewee there. Um, so yeah, I think all these, the segment thing is really important and thinking through that, like what are reasonable segments in for your content? Cause it's gonna differ for every single person. I mean, there's some that'll be consistent. Like you probably want an intro and conclusion for everything. But beyond that, it's most people are gonna be pretty different. So um, I think thinking through that kind of thing is very, very helpful. And we got as students, that one was really cool as a nursing student. She's going to like different hospitals and interviewing all these doctors. And um, she started actually editing last week, which is really cool. So any other questions or ideas of what you're doing? Justin, just a technical thing. Um some of the people are not we can't online we can't always hear everything they're asking or commenting on so if you could just repeat the question yeah sure that'd I be can, helpful i can try to use the owl but we're getting a, some nicked owl yeah there. we can, we're just getting a ton of it's not showing up here oh maybe i think it might be going to the owl now there we go there we go there we go okay as long as the speaker doesn't go through the owl, because that's what was making it loop. So, um, Justin, I guess some of us, I'm not sure how many of us in the room or online here have been, have used podcasts. I've used podcasts from other people that my students have been asked to listen to and, and write about and so forth. But I've never actually created a podcast myself or asked my students to do that. I'm wondering if you could just take us through the the thinking that you as an instructor might need to consider if you're looking at using a podcast in your course for say like what greg was mentioning the purpose of assessing their understanding around a concept or a big idea or something in your in your curricular area sure 
So give me one second here. I can just log in and show you the rubric that I've been using um, for my class. It's very weird not signing into Blackboard every day like I used to for 10 years in a row. I'll share the screen here just like I know you can't see it right now. So yeah, the rubric I'm using is honestly very similar to what a written rubric would be. Um, also, I do all standards-based grading, so like there's no points on any of this stuff, but you could imagine there being points, I suppose. Um, so I just basically, I have the like these are these are the same kind of like organizational structures that I would have in the paper. Um, so the way the way it works in my class too, and this is certainly not the only way to do it. Um, like I have, they have to write three, or they have to do three of essentially the same assignment, but on different pieces of content. But like they're just analyzing three different pieces of research, basically. And one of those analysis needs to be done in a podcast form. That's how I do it. Um, so this this rubric is very very similar. I just kind of changed some of the wording a little bit. But um, I think the only other thing in here that I would like to add, or I think I need to add, is that for media, I do think it's important that they like use the media to highlight their overall arguments. So like again, just to go back, like I don't want you just to write a paper and read it. So like. I'll show you here in a second the technical piece. Like, I think it's important to use uh, in like the radio world. They're called bumpers, like a little like audio bumper between sections to kind of signify that okay, I'm going from one section to the next section. Um, that's very easy to do in the technical in the tool. I'll show you here in a second. Um, that's one thing I want to add to this rubric is kind of force them to you know not force them but encourage them to use the media to shape their argument um, more explicitly. Is that what you're looking? Were you looking to see a rubric, Rick? Basically. Well, I was just looking to um, start to help someone who's considering using podcasting in their course. You know, how do you start that decision making in terms of how the tool will be used? And yeah, yeah, I'll a rubric the, definitely helps. I'll show the, I'll show the tool here in a second. Another thing you actually mentioned that's really important is that. I do think it's important that you have students listen to podcasts and like you choose at least one of them to listen to beforehand so you can model it. Cause like, obviously I'm going to go ahead and probably assume that almost all students listen to a podcast at some point in their life, but you choosing one that you're going to send to model to them is very important. So the psychology class I'm working with, um, there's, I, I had, she asked what podcast I'd recommend. There's one called science versus that's really good. That's basically like they do a really good job of like uh, citing resources in it. Um, and it's kind of fun. And they do a really good job of using media to kind of make the narrative move. Um, so she had her students listen to one episode of Science Versus and then one episode of anything else they wanted to listen to, basically. And then they had to reflect on, you know, what made the narrator a good storyteller, um, you know, what segments could they pick up on, that, those kind of things, just general observation. That's really helpful, again, to stop students from just reading the paper. Um, so I'd really recommend doing that. Um, I have, I, in my class, I have before the first of those assignments, they're listening to two podcasts. Um, so we have a little in class discussion about why they prefer, well, most students at least say they prefer listening as opposed to reading, which I won't think that, but. Um, I wonder if you could kill two birds with one stone there and, and get, I mean, this would take a little bit of a read, right? If you found a student that took the course already and then you use that student to do like an audio tour of the syllabus, yeah, now, that'd be kind of visual in podcasting, but you could have a conversation about your expectations, but then the student could be like, and here's how I took care of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could, yeah, you could do something like yeah. that. Sure, maybe. I also think, like, I do, I have like a, I have in the three years I've done this, I have like one example that I think is like really like in the ideal world what i would want yeah. like it, it's not common like i'm not going to pretend that like all these students are producing you know very very high-end podcasts they're all hitting the expectations i have content wise is what i care about but like they're not producing fabulously high-end organized you know you know they're not they're not voice actors like you can't expect them to sound <laughs> you know you have to have reasonable expectations you know but um, so I have one example that I've had over the last couple of years that I started to use to show students. I'm I'm a person I'm very hesitant to show students. Like other students work as examples. I hate painting them in boxes. So 
I'm really picky, like really picky about that. So maybe maybe if I wasn't so picky about that, I would I would do that. But I, I really am. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about in your experience students' learning curve, like how much time you're yeah. spending in the course mm -hmm. with them learning the skills, just how to do yeah. the podcast? So like how much on the technical? Yeah. So this is like really where my vision for like teaching digital skills at the university comes into play. So like what I really like doing is I like, and I did this actually for a, um, a philosophy class last semester I did this too, um, where I have like a 20 minute go into the class, talk about digital storytelling. I have them all, I have the instructor have them all bring a computer and I do a quick demo. And then I have them all do the technical skill there once in the safe environment with me. Um, and I just do, okay, here's everything theoretically you have to do. Uh, your podcast so they do it once in a safe environment and then i refer them back if you need more help you can schedule an appointment with our digital skills consultants um that's kind of the way i've been doing it um that's really what i would like to continue to do with the digital creator lab um is to have those in class quick little presentations um where i talk a little bit about the, the broader concepts of being a digital storyteller but like i really focus most of my time on the technical like you're going to record this thing um, you know, it's nothing important, but you're just going to record some sample audio. I'll show you the little, I'll just go through like what I usually do with students. Um, I think that's really helpful for students all get that experience once. And I've been starting actually this semester, I got a budget to even have uh, uh, or one of our consultants come with me. So it's not just me running around crazy trying to make, you know, fixing all the little problems that students have, but I have another consultant with me who can help me fix technical problems, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, just a quick question. I haven't actually required students to uh, create um, this podcast before, but I plan to because I'm thinking of what's next year. Uh, besides the laptop and maybe software that has a recording tool, mm -hmm. is there anything else? Yeah. That could possibly require? Yeah, so I would say most computers are going to have good enough microphones. They have a Mac. I'm not trying to sound like a Mac evangelists here, but like Macs just have way better microphones, this is way better. So if they have a Mac, it's gonna be fine. As you said, like their phone is gonna have a web, plenty good microphone on it, no matter what it is. Um, but we do have um, in the library, um, actually I just, the ones that are checkoutable or lendable, I suppose, um, you students can have these little, Blue, blue Yeti microphones. I actually just bought two more of these for Allendale and there's one downtown. I have no idea how often it's checked out. I should ask about that. Um, but you can check out uh, these Blue Yeti USB-C microphones that are really nice. So you have them probably. Um, and then they can check it out just like a book. Um, it's check out for three days and you can do a three day extension as well. So um, if there's interest in that, they can they can check out that equipment too. Actually, and I started a, I don't know how long this will last because my role is temporary, but um, I started a process where students, if you have like those honor students I was talking about, like them checking out a microphone every every once in a while to do these, it's just not feasible. So I have like a longer term process to do. Like I, I couldn't do it for a whole class, but if you have, you know, if you had an independent study or something like that, and you had a student who needed to check out a microphone for a whole semester, like there is a process to do that um, that I've started for this semester. I'd like to do that for more things too, but I'm not at the library long enough. I always make those decisions. <laughs> but I started. Anything else before I get to the more technical thing? I also want to say I'm going to show you this tool. I don't. I don't think this is like the greatest tool in the world for podcasting. It's a good enough tool that's free, that is basic enough. So when I'm looking for tools. I'm looking for tools that are going to at least have students do some of the technical skills, but like they're not going to be audio engineers at the end of this experience. And we don't want them to be audio engineers at the end of this experience. So like, for example, this tool is going to automatically level the volume between clips for them. It won't even let them adjust volume. It just does it automatically. Um, because like, do students really, do your students really need to know how to like level audio? I mean, maybe, but this tool tip does that for them. Like it'll also like fade in and out music for them with, without them having to like manually do any of that. So whenever I'm looking for tools, I'm always kind of looking for this like medium ground that teaches them like the basic technical aspects of it, but doesn't require them to become like super proficient in some specific 
technology that makes sense. So any other questions before I get to this technical piece? Okay. So this is Spotify for podcasters. Importantly, and this is why I don't like that Spotify bought it, you have to have a Spotify account connected to your Spotify for podcasters account. It can be the free one, that's fine, but you have to have it, like won't let you log in unless you have a Spotify account like, connected to the email address you use. That was a change they made over the summer and it caused me a lot of headaches, but um, I haven't found anything that's free that does the same thing yet. There are some free things, but you run out, you run into their premium features very quickly. So I'm not, I just don't want to do it. The, the other big free tool I should say, I should mention too, um, that is really good and it's been around forever, it's called Audacity. Um, and it's awesome, but it's pretty high end. Like it's going to ask, to, it's it's like if you've ever used GarageBand on a Mac, it's very, very similar. Um, so it's going to require more of students. And it's like an application, it's not web-based. Um, like it would depend. Like, so those those students I have um, doing honors projects, I have that using Audacity because they're getting a little more deeper into this thing than you know a one-off thing for an individual class. So the tool I would choose depends a little bit on that. Those are the tool, two free tools that I would most quickly recommend. And then a lot of students with Macs will use GarageBand. It's free on a Mac and it works really, really well. So in uh, Spotify for Podcasters, they have all sorts of stuff. So like Spotify for Podcasters hosts the podcast as well. And that's really important. So like it'll push it out there externally if you want it to. Um, and they actually has like all the like monetization things in, in built, built into it too. You don't need to turn any of that on, but it's like realistically, like for the purposes of what you're doing, you're only really going to ever use this episodes tab up here. Um, all the other stuff is like, if you were like actually creating like a real, real podcast, if you want, which I worked with an instructor who did that here. I worked with this really interesting biomedical science instructor mm -hmm. who he uh, had this class called a body's tale where he'd have students, he would ask students if they have like medical abnormalities in their life. Um, and they would come in and they would like tell their like narrative story of their medical abnormality. And then he would give like the scientific explanation of like why that happened or whatever is is super fascinating. It's so, so good. I get like two full seasons of it. All right, so when you click um, create an episode, it will start asking you if you just want to like, maybe you had, maybe you did use Audacity and you just have your episode ready to go there. You probably don't. Um, so you can just click the record or edit button down here. And this is like the main interface that you're going to see. And realistically, you're using a few tabs. You're going to use the record tab here to record. And this is where I could record using my, my built-in microphone or the owl now, or if I had a Yeti, it would show up there. Um, this is where my library of audio is going to exist, which you'll see in a second. And then the last little bit is down here, this little tab. These are like those little, uh, I said they're like little bumpers that go between sections. Um, so I can just a little NPR kind of vibe to it where you can go between between segments. So, and it's literally, you're just dragging and dropping elements from here to there. It's very, very easy. So to record, I can just go into record. And then if students want to upload content to you, they can just upload content to this. If they've recorded on their phone or wherever, they do that through this browse button. So I can just hit record. So now it's recording everything I'm saying. So I'll speak here for a little bit. Um, it does let you edit this. So I can edit the beginning, the end. I can cut things out of the middle. Um, if you use Panopto, it's similar where it doesn't actually delete the content. It just kind of skips over it, which is really, it's, it's actually really annoying for people who are like, media professionals, but for people who are not media professionals, it's really convenient because you're never actually losing it. So, all right, I'm gonna stop recording. And then I'm giving this presentation to students. Here's the first thing I tell them because students are very bad about this nowadays, or probably for a long time now. It is so incredibly important that you name every file because it just defaults it to a timestamp. Um, and this is really important if you do that whole class podcast uh, where everybody's sharing this big audio library, like you have to, they need to name everyone, please. So like I can just name them like lessons, intro. So I, I like emphasize that like five times every time I'm talking to a class because students are pretty bad at file, man file naming. So then at this point, I could just, I could do a few things. I could um, 
You can download it, delete it there. You could add background music to it, um, which I'll show you here in a second. But I'm just going to drag it into my timeline. Super, super simple. And then if I wanted to edit it, I just click the little three dot meatball menu, hit edit audio. And here is where I can now, um, I can start to, I can start to edit my audio. So if I want to take that little part in the beginning, I just put my playhead here. I see this little black line, that's the playhead. So we start it, start it right there and I hit split. And let's say I want to take out this little chunk right there. I can hit split again. And I can delete this. I can go over there if I want to delete the whole thing in the beginning. So whatever is shaded would not. Yep, exactly. So if you've ever if you've ever recorded content in Panopto, it's the exact <clears throat> same thing. So there we go. So now I'm deleting all that content. Again, I can split that again. So yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. It's it's hard to edit when this thing's only 30 seconds long. It won't let you edit like fractions in a second. Like this is a kind of unrealistic environment. So at this point I could hit save. It's gonna ask me if it would like me to save it as multiple segments or one new segment. So I see it as one new segment. And then you can see it's just my intro edited, which is what you want. It'll process it. Give it a second here. Usual ones processing. I can talk about those little bumps, or little bumpers that we can put. It's a little aggressive. Very NPR sounding as well. So I can just drag these here. So now, do you have any edge shearing bumpers? No, I, I don't have the right to edge shear. It's very litigious. Um, all right. So now, if I want to add background music here, I can just click the background music button. And I can choose to have background music. It's going to add it to my intro. And you'll see it just kind of does it for me. Like it's going, you'll see. So I'll just pick one of these. Sometimes. Are the ones that pop up there, those are ones that you bring credits to. Yeah. So all everything here, these are all Spotify. Okay. Yeah. So I can hit apply here. It's, it'll add it. Are those on your Spotify station? Those, those are Spotify. Yeah, yeah, these are just Spotify's. So you don't have to have a station populated yourself. No, no. And I don't spot Spotify's not gonna give you anything that they don't that isn't free. Correct? No, not in this. No, they won't not in this. So it's not gonna pull something from your account like no. an edge or I literally don't even use Spotify. I don't even like right, I don't I literally don't Spotify. use Spotify, so I don't actually but like that's why like everything here is just what you're gonna see. Yeah. So now if I hit play here, um it does let you edit this. Actually, hold on, you gotta go back. You have to go to the next, you have to do a preview episode, I believe. So I can edit the music back. Maybe didn't add my music in yet. Um, it does save it. What's my background music? Let you where where it doesn't actually it's, it's actually maybe I have to hit save and I'll play it. We'll try this. Try this once. Okay. Okay, we'll see what this sounds like. So you see how it puts the music in the beginning and I'm not even talking yet. Um, it does let you edit this so I can edit the so beginning. Imagine I'm actually saying something that makes sense for an intro there. And you can see how, you know, it kind of sounds like an NPR show where it's music starts first and kind of lowers as you start to speak. Um, and then the uh, if you go back, it would be, uh, if I go back, it would show the uh, that little bumper there as well. So you're just, you're literally just pushing segment and then the bumpers and your segments and just kind of go down and it creates one. Another cool thing about doing it as a whole class uh, podcast is like you as the instructor could record the intro for the podcast generically. So you could like name your podcast something and like you could you could be there intro the podcast in every single episode right at the beginning. Um, and then you have your students intro the episode after that, if the individual episode, that makes sense. So I've seen that. That's what... Uh, that's what actually both of the big ones are working at the semester of dietetics and psychology and practice are both doing. So. And yeah, basically, once you hit save here, I could publish this if I wanted to, give it a name, all that good stuff. And it's shareable, though it creates a link to share it. Oh, I think you have to give it a description because that's the. Ask the question why you're doing it. Yeah. 
So I've had students in the past who do not have computer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if you run into that and if you have, do our computer loaners at the university have the ability to do this? So loaner computers, this is all web-based, which I really like. So like this, like the power of the computer doesn't really matter. So I will say the audio is not going to sound great. Like, cause those computers have very bad microphones, but like they could get an extra microphone or use a phone. To, um, that would be the best way I would go with that specific instance. Here's my podcast. It's got to ask me to hear. I went too far. I tried. It's acting like I, uh, it's acting like I'm actually publishing this, which I'm going to do. And then, yeah, basically, then you can see a little, it'll show me, I have my test episode here. So if you're that instructor, I don't should have saved. I was signed into the clinical diet text one before this, but I signed out. Um, but if you did it like that, you just had episode one, episode two, episode three, and you could name them different things. Each student would pop into their, their individual episode. Any other questions? Let me show you the, let me go back to, to the digital creator lab. So if you're interested, um, you know, these, so when I, again, like I'd be happy to go into any class and kind of give this general presentation, like not this specific thing, but you know, talk about the technical aspects of it so students have them all record real fast. I think that's so important to have them record um, in a safe environment. I think, I do think it's actually helpful to have like a different person do that to some degree as well. So I'm happy to, happy to do that, of course. Um, but then I always point out, you know, if you get stuck, need help, you can make an appointment um, what's that? on the admin to it. But they can click make an appointment and it goes into the, the knowledge market system where they can schedule an appointment with the digital skills consultant. Those can be virtual, they can be in person. So the first time they actually got something coming up. Yep. That'd be great. <laughs> So just so yeah. Justin, the, the first time through, then if you're if you're considering a podcast, you really you really want to make sure that you're going to use a podcast. Like I guess you got to look at the design of what you want to have happen and how you want students to convey their understanding or knowledge before you decide that podcast is the way that you want them to deliver it, because that's essentially it's essentially a method of delivery. Um, it's right. I mean, that, that's essentially what you're asking students to do is show me what, you know, and we're going to use the podcast as a method of delivery for that versus writing a paper versus doing a traditional presentation or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. For sure. I think too, like it's, it's more shareable. I, I say this about when I talk about using media generally, like how often is a student going to, you know, share a paper they wrote with a friend or a parent or whoever, probably never, but Something like this, there's at least a chance, I would imagine, or a video or any type of media. I think there's significant, significantly higher chance. I can certainly see that. If you if you choose to have one podcast and your students are making episodes, mm -hmm. is there a way to close it down at the end so that yeah, you change the password so they don't okay. yeah, then they know, yeah. Yeah, because if you do it that way, you basically have to make like a generic Gmail account that's for that purpose. Right. Yeah. That'd be the way I would do it. Yeah, I was just going to say that I could certainly see how aspiring principals, aspiring superintendents would want this kind of skill. Yeah. Uh, in terms of trying to engage a bunch of different people. I mean, yeah. I, I think the days of, you know, this newsletter. Yeah. I mean, like silly stuff, like, you know, all those superintendents a few years ago, and they're making all those videos about snow days and stuff yeah. like that, you know? It's a great example. Or here's why I hate COVID because I miss all of you. Like, those videos existed because, like, one person in that superintendent's office probably knew how to do sure. that, right? You know? Sure. Like, realistically, like, why couldn't that, that's a big or skill? A, you know? <laughs> a tech savvy person. Yeah. 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 I think that I think that's 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 why I go back to like, you know, it was a it was a real seen as a real skill to use Word and Excel 15 however many years ago, right? Um, I think we're at that point right now with media in all I would argue that could make it most of the
I have one other question. So I'm trying to wrap my head around how time intensive this is mm -hmm. for students to see if it makes sense to, like the projects you've described seem like they last through the term. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense for an isolated assignment? Yeah, that's how I do it in my class. So oh, mine's okay. real small. Like, I mean, I, mine's really small. They basically just like, they're choosing a peer reviewed article and they're going to review it. So all they're doing is they're giving a summary of it. And then they're giving, I always have, I call it the um, implication section where they talk like more conversation about like, what are the actual implications of this or what? Yeah, and it's, you know, it's not that innovative or assignment or anything like that, but I mean, it really shouldn't take them that long to do. Like, I, I, I'm sure she would do that. And, you know. So you do this at one day, you know, like the journal entry, the journal entry. Yeah, I think it's different a little bit, but you could. I would probably wouldn't phrase it as a podcast necessarily. I think like the storytelling piece of it is really important. Um, and like the structure, like it doesn't mean so structured that's like a long term thing necessarily. I mean that is the way a lot of people want to do it. But, like I do is very one off, pretty small thing. That's that's where it's worth thinking about these. And I actually do think that's really important. Um this is maybe me speaking selfishly from like a student support perspective, but like as someone who runs a student support service around media projects, that could tend to say, oh, it's a big media project. That's going to be my final presentation, right? Well, it's impossible to support if you scale all this up. Like we can't, if we couldn't support, you know, we couldn't, we would be like dead for, you know, 13 weeks of the semester and then absolutely crammed in the last two weeks. So I'm trying to encourage people to think like this doesn't need to be a big final big yeah. final thing like it, you it, you just got to change your expectations a little bit but that's okay too um yeah and I, I it's worked it's worked for me I, it's never the final project in my class is never a big media thing that's the paper but the media thing comes throughout the semester and it's lower stakes i wonder almost about like the both and like maybe a lower stakes piece at some point you're yeah. beginning of the semester and then having this be an option, large project later, it's like, hey, yeah. that's very once. Yeah. And you think this would be a better fit than a PowerPoint or paper or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I take that back. My final presentation is a video. Um, so I guess I kind of do it that way. But it's, uh, I guess I'm kind of doing what you suggested to a degree. Well, and to your earlier point about that becoming just sort of a dumb skill, yeah. If, I have students uh, for whatever reason and if something really comes up and they have to miss that final session where they do the presentations. Yeah. I think I just told them that you can record it and send it to me. I don't talk about it. Yeah. And just like you guys and they they do it now they're sure. they're older students, but yeah, there's figure out figure out. With the software <clears throat> the Spotify and if you are doing one that was and more like the conversation or you had two or three different people now and they were in different locations would they all be somehow logged in together to do the conversation i'm just trying to picture yeah. how the multiple person one works. So in that case if, if they're all remotely i would just have people get on a zoom call and record the zoom call and then um, you could just strip the audio from that there's a lot of ways that can happen that's definitely the way i would do that circumstance uh, I've had instructors too, like, so we do have, oh, I don't have pictures of that on our website. Um, we have a podcasting studio in the digital creator lab as well. People wanted to meet in a central location. It's set up for really only two people at a time, but um, it's not physically large enough, but for that option. It does work though well. I've had one, one really good podcast example I had was a student. Um, she reviewed an article about like, basically like, um, an LMS for pre learning management system for preschoolers, and her mom just happened to be like a preschool administrator. So she basically just like the implication section of her podcast was her just talking with her mom about like what are the realities in her mom's preschool that are relevant to this article. It's really good. convenient that her mom was the preschool administrator, but it worked really well. Any questions online?
Oh, Justin, thank you so much. Is, is there any further questions? I think this is a great starting point for many of us who've thought about podcasting, but maybe really haven't been courageous enough to pull the trigger and do it. I'm talking about me, none of the other people online. <laughs> no, I was going to say, well said, Rick, well said. Just looking right. for other methods to to kind of give students options to assess their understanding about the things they're learning in, in courses and and uh, so this this seems like a an alternative that we could consider bringing into our teaching practice. Yeah, I think to me like the really like when it comes down to it, like I just want students to be able to like comfortably and authentically speak about a topic and I think a podcast is a great way to do that that's like more authentic like that's and it's it's a it's a medium they have experience with most likely um and I think it's easy like they'll hear them I think it's important to hear yourself back I think that's why like, video is important you, you know watch your own practice come out almost no matter what it is I think the same thing right you listen to audio you listen back you hear how comfortable you are to talk about. so that's a great skill to have. great experience then well, Justin, thanks for facilitating this conversation. Um, we really appreciate your time and the opportunity for us to just hear your expertise and understanding around um, podcasting. And I know you bring a lot of other uh, expertise from other digital topics as well. So um, we just appreciate you being here and hosting us at this uh, or being our guest on this uh, webinar for us this afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Good seeing, good seeing you all.